Barticalo, the muddy lagoon. For centuries, people of this coastal city in Sri Lanka have claimed to hear singing fish from the lagoon. The mysterious choristers of the night have baffled people for years. Investigations were disrupted by the civil war and tsunami. For nearly three decades, the singing fish were forgotten. With the war over, the region is accessible. But do these singing fish still remain? Batikala, a tongue of land in the east coast of Sri Lanka. The district includes three lagoons, one of which is the Batikala Lagoon, the largest in the region. The lagoon is bordered by colonial structures, mangroves and fishermen. The lagoon itself is the second largest employer in the district, with 10,000 families depending on it via fisheries. It's the monsoon season, but that doesn't stop fishermen from plying their trade. The large brackish lagoon is a breeding ground for a variety of plant life and aquatic organisms. It is in these waters that a peculiar fish is found, one that is known to sing at night and whose identity has eluded people for centuries. While some claim to have heard their music, others say it's a myth. Connecting the two landmasses separated by the lagoon is the Kaladi Bridge. Built during British colonial rule, it's the oldest and longest iron bridge in Sri Lanka. On the third span of this bridge, they say one can hear the singing fish. Allusions to these mysterious singers are found frequently in the city. Locals say the sound, or music, is best heard during full moon nights, when the atmosphere is quiet. But its producers have baffled people for centuries all depend on the listener, I suppose. I have no knowledge in music. So what I can hear, it's a good sound. You can, it's not a disturbing sound. You can hear it, that's all. But a lot of people hear, heard this earlier, were telling this is their music. And they, even they coded the music. Dr. Arulathi is part of a local organization called the Science Navigators. They have been investigating the phenomenon since 2012. The first known recording of the singing fish was made at the Kaladi Bridge in the 1950s. A Jesuit priest dropped a hydrophone from the bridge into the lagoon and recorded the music, which was later telecast on radio. Even though the recordings are lost, its musical notations were written down by a music teacher who claimed that there was a perceptible rhythm or beat. Jesuit's father was recorded and sent this music to USA to code it in a musical notes. And it is notes are there. I actually asked our local music teacher to play this note. mixture of lot of sounds. If we, if we listen one sound, it's coming like a croaking. When we listen together, it creating a very nice sound where we hear these sounds in nature everywhere, even in jungles, even in night trees, lot of animals making, lot of birds making. That kind of sound we hear in the water. In 2012, the science navigators managed to record the actual sound of the singing fish close to the third span of the Kaladi Bridge. Initially, we used only a simple micro recorder, a digital recorder. We wrapped that recorder into the polythene bag 
and attached to a weight and we went to the site by boat and that is close to Kallari Bridge now. Earlier it was uh, called as Manning, uh, Lady Manning Bridge. And we dropped that back with a micro cassette recorder and uh, actually digital recorder and recorded for some time. This is the raw audio recording. Strangely, the sound, often heard near the Kaliti Bridge, is sometimes audible out of water. Throughout the years, locals and visitors would visit the bridge to listen to the music. They would press their ears against its iron pillars to hear the sound better. Initially, the Jesuit missionaries, missionaries was interested and they were listening to that regularly. And likewise, Ramayana mission missionaries, Swami Bifalananda is from, he's a physicist and mathematician. Uh, he was interested. He, were, he takes their colleagues to the same place and they listen regularly. And a lot of uh, British colonial secretaries were here and they were listened and documented. Indeed, in the 1840s, British politician Sir Emerson Tennant set out from the historic Dutch fort by the lagoon to hear the singing fish. He claimed he heard not one sustained note, but a multitude of clear and distinct sounds. The local fisherfolk told him that it was made by shells. But there are differing opinions where the sound can be heard. While some say it's heard only at certain parts of the lagoon and near the Kaliti Bridge, Others say that they have heard the music everywhere. Older fishermen in the area are known to navigate by the sound of the singing fish. For centuries, they used a unique method to listen to the peculiar sound of the lagoon. Fishermen would dip their oar in the water and place the outer extremity to the ear. The sound from the water has to come to the air. The air is not a good conductor. But uh, O is a material, you know. It can conduct the sound very quickly. That's the reason the old fisherman knows about this. But the producers of the sound remained a mystery. So various theories circulated throughout the years. The first theory was that the music was made by a creature inhabiting a shell. The local people refer to the shells as uri which was a species of cerithium shells. Another theory was that the sound was made by a frog, which is disputed since they cannot produce sounds underwater and are not usually found near salt water. Finally, a more ludicrous conjecture was that the sound was made by vibrations of telegraph wires in the vicinity of the Kaladi Bridge. Also, the underwater sounds probably echoed off the rocks and concrete abutments upwards towards the bridge, enabling people to hear the sound. Naturalists and enthusiasts were intrigued by the mystery of the lagoon. So much so that Ibaticalo came to be known as the land of the singing fish. But a question lingered. Was this phenomenon restricted to this lagoon? In liturgies, they say there are places where in California, USA also have some uh, same kind of phenomena. Of course, we all know that the ocean is not silent. A lot of fish can make sound. Problem is whether it is the same sound we are hearing in particular, are we hearing elsewhere? In the 1950s, the first investigation was launched by pioneer diver Rodney Jonklas. Jonklas also discovered the shipwreck of the HMS Hermes, the world's first aircraft carrier, which sunk during World War II off the coast of Baticalo. The legendary diver, Rodney John Klaas, has dived into the same place and he isolated a lot of fish from there. In fact, a lot of fish he isolated can make sounds, according to the biologists. So, it may not be belongs to a single species. 
oh it could it must be some few groups or single group for sure we have not isolated the person who is making sound so far John Klaas who did his investigation near the Kaladi bridge also claimed that there was no peculiar species in the area and the fish fauna was similar to that of other lagoons if so why did the creatures sing only in the Batikala lagoon with a water spread of 40 square miles finding the mysterious creatures would be challenging unless the identity of the singing fish is discovered it will forever remain a mystery